The Sierra Nevada is one of the most mystic mountain ranges in the United States. It has three national parks, Sequoia, Yosemite, and Kings Canyon. It holds a variety of information in the development of its landscape and rock structure, even outside the national parks themselves. The rocks we see today did not originate from the Sierra Nevada, but from the ocean. The rocks that became a part in the Sierra Nevada were originally formed in a deep, oceanic setting between 150 to 600 million years ago. These rocks were created in a variety of different settings that involve sedimentary and igneous processes. The subduction process helped bring these rocks together and were later metamorphosized to a certain stage. Today, these rocks are known as the metamorphic rocks of the Sierra Nevada. Signs of these rocks can be seen in Yosemite, which include the Ferguson Slide and Yosemite Bug Stops. Granite formed later on between 150 to 85 million years ago. These rocks are known as the plumbing system of the Sierra Nevada because of a major series of past volcanoes that were similar to the modern Andes. As the volcanoes erupted at the surface, granites crystallized from magma below the crusted surface. Over time, the volcanoes became extinct and eroded away. The volcano underpinnings remain as the granites. Later on in time, uplift began to occur. Some areas that were lower in elevation started to rise up. Geologists still debate today on how much uplift had helped make the elevations what they are currently. There were two key carving tools that helped sculpt the Sierra Nevada. The first one was stream erosion. Running water carried rocks and other debris downstream and helped carve out the canyons. Later on, glacial erosion finished off the carving process when moving ice picked up rock and other debris. It gave some of the valleys their U-shaped profiles. Glaciers were spread out through the Sierras, especially through areas of Yosemite. Yosemite shows off more of the glacial erosion features. These processes helped expose the granite and alter the landscape. Many geologists have recorded information from its rock structure that dates back millions of years. The Sierra Nevada houses many types of rocks like granite, serpentinite, and many others. The video you are about to see takes us on a trip through Yosemite National Park. This park holds a visual perspective on the demonstration of glacial erosion. If you're starting from the Fresno State Library, exit and head west on Shaw and then enter northbound 41. Continue north on 41 and cross the San Joaquin River. Highway 41 northbound toward Yosemite. Drive through Coarse Gold Ochres and onward to Yosemite National Park. Once in the park, continue toward Yosemite Valley. There will be a very long turnout on your left on a long right hand bend. Very carefully go across the road to park in this turnout. You may wish to delay your move over into this parking area until about halfway through this bend in order to be able to see oncoming traffic both ways. Our next stop lies right before you enter the tunnel. This area is a showcase for how rocks weather differently than others. Minerals play a key role in helping determine the rate of decomposition in the rocks. You can see the light minerals called quartz and some flaky black minerals called biotite. Geologists feel that biotites are the biggest controls on how granite weathers. When water gets in between the flakes of biotite, it reacts with it and creates a new mineral. The biotite then expands the crystal structure. It helps split the rock apart and helps convert it to sand grains. If there are pre-existing cracks or joints in the rock structure, we will not see these rocks become cliffs that are massive or steep. The darker rocks are called enclaves, which are igneous rocks related to granite. These rocks are slowly weathering away and stand out as bumps. These crystallize beneath the Earth's surface at a higher temperature. These were blobs that were floating around in the molten mush as the rock was crystallizing. Over time, these enclaves will become loose boulders and may fall down into the valley one day. In addition, some of the boulders that become pedestals, which are larger, include the host rock and enclaves. The boulder here is different than the main ground rock. Geologists call this glacial rags because the rock got here from past glaciers. As the glacier was moving through the Yosemite Valley, boulders like these fell on top of it. The glacier then transported them some distance, similar to a conveyor belt. At some point, the glacier melted away and left the boulder here, which is far from where it originally fell onto the moving glacier. One of the most recent glaciations filled the valley with ice. Evidence also shows that the ice used to be higher, therefore helping this boulder be where it is today. As we enter through the West Tunnel Yosemite Valley, our next stop is the best one of the trip. 
After exiting the tunnel, immediately tur turn into the left side parking lot. This is the one area where you can see a much broader view of Yosemite National Park. Looking down, you can see the floor of the valley, which is relatively narrow and it's not the classical U-shape that one associates with a glaciating valley. The older, more extensive glaciations that once filled the valley contributed to some of the carving of it. These more extensive glaciations happened before the most recent one. You can see the steep cliffs and the angle breaks above those. This helps geologists get the perspective on where the glacial ice was relative to the much smaller recent glaciations. Leaving stop three, continue on to the valley, turn right into Brideville Falls parking area. This will be 3.1 miles from stop two. Our next stop is Bridal Vale Falls. Even before glaciers came through here and steepened the canyon walls, we did have hanging valleys and some measure of waterfalls. The trunk stream helped carve the valley faster and deeper than the side waterfalls. Glaciers contributed minorly to making the canyon wall steeper and making these waterfalls more dramatic. It is a mystery to many geologists on how much more effects the glaciers had on developing Yosemite Valley versus the rate of erosion when the streams alone were down cutting. Leaving stop four, turn right coming out of the parking lot, then an immediate right to head upstream in Yosemite Valley. This will be 0.4 miles from stop four, park on the left side. Our next stop is next to the Merced River. Loose rocks that originate from upstream surround the area. These rocks are from glaciated transports. As we mentioned earlier, rocks and boulders are transported on top of the glaciers. They usually are dumped in the front when the glacier recedes and left in ridge-like piles, which are called moraines. This area became a lake deposit when the glacier flowed downhill, carving divots into the rock surface. After the divots were carved, the lake filled in with sediments, which gives us the flattish bottom. Yosemite owes its shape to the original stream erosion, glacial erosion, and the development of the lake. What makes Yosemite very unique is a combination of its flat bottom and unique steep wall structure. Yosemite's wall structure is steeper on average than any other Sierra Nevada canyon, except to Hippie Valley. The massive granitic rocks that make up the steep canyon walls don't have many cracks or joints. The wall's strength, steepness, and vertical cracks are a sign of how much impact glaciers had when sculpting Yosemite Valley. Leaving stop five, continue on the road upstream, but note signs to 140 slash 120 that will lead you left to the road that heads westward and downstream and eventually out of the valley. Make sure you follow the signs that will keep you on highway 140, staying straight rather than turning left or right. We will leave the park and continue downstream. You will be passing the town of El Portal. On the right side, you will see a gas station and general store. Pull in to the right. This area is where geologists try to figure out the downstream limit of the glaciers. There is evidence of a pre-existing canyon that the glaciers enhanced and erosion had little effect. The west side Sierra glaciers were bigger in size than the eastern Sierra glaciers. The crest of the Sierra is located in the eastern park boundary. The shape of the canyon has differences because the downstream is more V-shaped, while the upstream version is more U-shaped of the downstream glacial limit. The elevation at this location is much lower than the east, which means it got warmer here. Over time, glaciers couldn't retain their ice at this location. Erosion took over after the glaciers melted away. This area is a neat transition point between the upstream portions of the Merced River due to stream cutting. This had a big hand in modifying the canyon with glaciers. Get back in your car and continue down on Highway 140. You will then reach a stoplight which marks the beginning of the detour around the Ferguson slide. Cross the bridge and when you cross the bridge at the end you will reach a stoplight. At the downstream stoplight there is a small parking area on the right where you may park. Then walk back upstream to look at the slide and make sure to watch for traffic. Our next stop takes us to the notorious Ferguson slide. As you may see, they had to make two bridges to accommodate traffic around the slide. In the past, maintaining this area was a challenge to many officials. When the big landslide hit in the summer of 2006, officials figured there was no way to maintain this road and decided to build a bypass. Most landslides occur when it's wet, which is called poor fluid pressure. Geologists speculate that during the wet months, you had water seep into the drainage above. It took time for the area itself to get saturated from the previous winter months. If you look at the rocks that came down with the landslide, it's sort of shaly, very weak, and susceptible to fracture. This area is also made up of chert, which is supposed to be a stronger form of rock. 
but the location of the rock slides producing more shale rocks. But these are the older metamorphic rocks that came from deep ocean sediment. These are part of the much older history of the Sierra Nevada. They are more susceptible to sliding than the rocks upstream or downstream of the Merced River. The rocks across the river where they set up the bypass are more massive and do not break off easily. Surveying devices are also present to remotely monitor the landslide and the Merced River. It's always a challenge to engineer around rock slides such as the Ferguson Slide. That's the end of our tour of Yosemite National Park. This place holds a lot of beautiful scenery and also showcases the process of how nature works over time.